Hi, here I am again. It's Pauline. I'm ready to put up my first lesson, uh, first lesson of mine um, on this YouTube channel. Um, and it's going to be a little watercolor, uh, a little demonstration of the very beginning of a watercolor painting. And it would be, and it'll be steps that you need to do for every painting, things that you need to get ready so that you, because uh, watercolor painting is a kind of a quick thing, can be a quick thing, and it's good to have all your materials ready. So I'm going to be following this uh, this first page in the book, which says materials and preparation for every lesson. This is 15 step-by-step -step watercolor paintings, and it's uh, co-authored by Peter Humanick and myself, uh, or and me. So um, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have everything ready uh, to start that you need. So I have uh, my book. I have a piece of paper. I'm using... Uh, quarter sheet of uh, 140 pounds Strathmore paper and on this I have a, just a quick sketch. I'm going to be doing a flower painting and I don't want to make it the drawing too detailed because the flower is going to be a loose rendition. Um, then I also have my palette which has a variety of colors. I mostly have, I have a few blues, a few reds and uh, a few yellows. So I consider like burnt sienna raw sienna those are yellows for me I also have a towel so that I can dry my paper and I have uh, a few jugs of clean water and a spray bottle and a paper towel and some brushes and uh, I have actually too many brushes <laughs> and um, uh, some tape so what I'm going to do the very first thing I do would be I would need to uh, soak the paper for this method. Okay, so this method is is loose and it's um, Kind of all at once not too much drying in between so a little bit but not too much So the thing to do is to get your paper and I would if I had the the room here, which I don't I would uh, take this and soak it in a tub for about uh, maybe 10 minutes at the most. And then, so now I don't have that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wet the paper, really soak it, really soak it, and then allow that water. So I've already done this a few times, so I don't need to do it too much right now, but you make sure that you, when you're doing yours, you do it quite a lot. So I'm gonna let that water soak in, and then I'm gonna show you how I towel dry it and how I, um, tape it down and then I get ready to start the painting. This is something that I would do for every painting. Um, and the reason, the reason I uh, soak the paper is because the, the paper itself acts like a, a sponge and the water acts like a brush. So when you, so what you would do is you would dry, dry surface dry it like this. Um, so that there's no water sitting on the top. And then once that is done, you would tape it down. So, but what happens then is there is still water underneath the paper on the surface of the whatever you're using. Now you would use a plexiglass or now I'm just using a sheet of coated masonite. Um, so the water... There is water inside the paper and underneath the paper, but the surface is dry. And what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to create a, a line. And then that line will stay where you want it to stay. Or you can soften it by uh, adding water to the outer edge or, you know, a diff an edge of it somewhere. So the reason for that is to give you soft and hard edges. You're not committed to... Um, to a line. Now, if you were just doing plain uh, painting on dry paper with watercolor, or any kind of paint really, but I'm talking about watercolor right now, you would have a line that you couldn't get rid of even, no matter how hard you try, you can't get rid of that line. So this way, with the water inside the fibers of the paper and underneath, you'll see later that you can make move that line anywhere you want it to be, or soften it, or Anyway, it works very, very well. The paper um, should be very soft and pliable. So it would be just like a, 
uh, like a rag, which is what it is. It's uh, the paper. If you you're, you need to buy hundred uh, percent cotton rag paper, and that's that's archival paper, and it won't uh, it won't shouldn't ever yellow over time or uh, degrade in any way because it's made out of one hundred percent cotton. And when it's wet all the way through, it's just so uh, floppy. All right. So I am ready now to start painting. I've uh, soaked my paper and surface dried it. I'm going to wet my palette. So what I want to do is I want to allow uh, these uh, paints, which I have squeezed in. I, you, when you get your fresh palette and your fresh tubes of paint, I use tubed paint, you would uh, squeeze, squeeze a large amount, maybe even half or all of the tube, into the well and then let it dry for a few days and then then you surface dampen it with a you know with a spray bottle or with a brush so that it's ready to um, uh, ready to paint with and when you're going to paint with it you uh, when you're following these lessons be sure to to see how much paint is being used so what I will do is I will, so this is alizarin crimson. So what I will do is I will talk about how rich the puddle is. So if you look here, you'll see there's a lot of water in that. So that's not a rich puddle. And in this one here, there is not very much water. This is a very rich puddle. So that's the thing that you want to be uh, cognizant of when I'm painting. And I'll try to remember to tell you that. Um, so, and I'll mix some colors together to create different effects, and I'll talk about that as I go along. So, um, starting with the next lesson, you'll see I, I'll begin to paint, and then uh, once I have begun painting and I have my first wash laid down, I will, um, I'll take the painting down after that. So, get ready to start your paintings. All right, ciao.